Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports at just six days a week. We'll get into why uh, we're not quite living up to that moniker this week for you, but I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. But you can follow me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform choice, thank you. Please leave a review. Five stars, kind comments, really does help the show. You can also watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scani Six Pack to get the show as soon as it hits your feed. I want us to get in here really quickly and talk about the Green Bay Packers upcoming game today. Beginning week one against the Philadelphia Eagles. Jordan Love's breakout moment might come full circle. I guess he's coming full circle here in week one after his his time to shine in 2022, nearly bringing the Packers back, nearly clutching victory from the jaws of defeat against the Eagles a couple seasons back, and also touch base about the Wisconsin Badgers football program. After the last time we spoke, I think we've been able to see some things, and I'm maybe more convinced in other places, Mostly less convinced about the quality of this team. The more more I sit on the Badgers' 28-14 victory against Western Michigan. Uh, but I know we said we were hoping to be back in the feed Monday. Didn't happen. <laughs> Couldn't do it Tuesday. Um, you know, that, that'll happen when weather over, over the Gulf <laughs> diverts your travel. Meaning you miss uh, a connection. You get back to, to your home a full day later. Uh, than you were expecting, which isn't great because you were already planning on a three day week before you had to fly out to the East Coast, uh, as I'm doing. But hey, uh, hope you all enjoyed the the pre recorded content last week. Uh, we had, I had a great time putting that all together really quickly uh, for everyone. Not really quickly; it was judicious. Got to you know have a great conversation with Jake, um, talking Wisconsin Badgers football recruiting. That's a great episode if you want to get caught up on all the recruits that, you know, this upcoming weekend, lots of the recruits that we talked about in that episode uh, last week with Jake, lots of recruits are coming into Madison this weekend uh, on visits. And they're going to be catching whatever this football game against South Dakota is going to look like. Um, and of course, we also gave you a little sneak peek in there of an episode of Snap the Pigskin. Uh, that is the NFL show I do weekly uh, with Noah Clark. And we previewed the NFC North and AFC North divisions. Got a good look at the AFC North last night. The Ravens, ooh, just barely, just barely not being able to tie. Oh, man. The Chiefs, the Chiefs just feel inevitable by the hair of their chinny chin chins. Uh, they get passed. The Baltimore Ravens and of course that that NFC North preview. Uh, we went a little deep into every team in the NFC North. If you want to get a good rapid fire way to know how the Packers might fare against the other teams in the division this season, uh, this past week's episode on Snap the Pigskin that released uh, two days ago, as you are now listening to this on Friday, September sixth. Uh, we broke down our playoff predictions, who's going to win each division, the wild card teams, and who Noah and I have for our Super Bowls. I may have done a little bit of an emotional hedge. I, I may be a little bit high on other teams in the division. I don't know if it's me um, trying to cope, uh, pre-cope with <laughs> for a Packers heartbreaking loss. Um, but we are here in, in your feed. Uh, I'm going to give this episode... Some some space to ruminate here on a Friday. We'll we'll get back into your feed next week Monday uh, a after I return from some travel plans that I have to I have to go to this this weekend. And look, we're getting all the personal stuff, all all the personal travel stuff out of the way uh, here in August, the very beginning of September, so that you know it's hockey season, basketball season is going to come to the forefront. It's going to be go, 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 go uh, here. So really excited uh, as we continue to ramp up to that. Um, but let's let's talk about the Green Bay Packers first, and we'll we'll break down a little bit of the Wisconsin Badgers matchup against the South Di Dakota, South Dakota, South Dakota Coyotes um, in the latter half of the show. Uh, but 
Green Bay taking on Philadelphia Eagles. I want to talk a little bit about what e- each of these matchups are, are going to look like. Uh, talking talking ball, like like we did you know, leading up to that big playoff run last year uh, for, for the Green Bay Packers. Really, really happy to just you know, get, get into the nitty gritty again. Um, and... Uh, f- for the record, I-, I have I have a pick on lock for this game. You you can go and find that on on the episode of Snap the Pigskin that we just released earlier this week. I have taken a side formally in this game. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm not so sure about my pick. The more I dig into this matchup, uh, because I think both sides ultimately just have a lot of questions to answer, right? You have a brand new defensive scheme for the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles have brand new coordinators on both sides of the ball. I personally am quite concerned about the Philadelphia Eagles and their ability to bounce back after what appeared to be a tumultuous second half of the season as they collapsed. And then we get a, you know, Mike McCarthy, Aaron Rodgers esque expose on the relationship between Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni, the starting quarterback and head coach in in Philadelphia. I don't think that is a great omen for how things are going to go this upcoming season in, in Philadelphia. You you also lack some of the other stability that is brought by a, a longtime franchise <laughs> centerpiece in starting center Jason Kelsey. And so to lose all that, I think, brings a lot of unknown to this upcoming Philadelphia Eagles season. Particularly on the offensive side of the ball, where Nick Sirianni is no longer going to be calling offensive plays. That's going to offensive coordinator Kellen Moore and bringing in a lot of changes. Kellen Moore runs a lot of pre-snap motion. The Philadelphia Eagles under Nick Sirianni ran some of the least amount of pre-snap motion in the entire league. It's a big change to an offense where there was lots of fights about changes to the offense in the latter half of last season. How quickly is this going to gel? You know, additionally, this offense has a tendency to air the ball out, take its shots down the field. Doesn't really throw the ball over the middle. Is that going to change with Kellen Moore? I think there's a real chance that these Kellen Moore offenses typically make good use of their tight end talent. And I would normally say that a team that is less likely to throw the ball over the middle is probably a good matchup for the Green Bay Packers. But again, this is a brand new scheme. I don't think we totally know what Halfley is going to look like here. Um, I, I'm not convinced by the linebackers on, on the Green Bay Packers in coverage, Quay Walker in particular. Uh, you have Edgerin Cooper, who is cleared to play in this game after sustaining a hip injury in training camp. Uh, he's cleared to play, but I don't know how much he's going to play. And I also have a lot of questions about his coverage ability. Um, but despite that, look at all the talent that the Eagles have throw the ball to on the boundary, right? AJ Brown and Devonta Smith. You're going to ask some combination of Jair Alexander and Eric Stokes to cover those two on the boundary on the outside where the Eagles love to throw the ball over and over again. And yeah, you have more safety help this upcoming season with Xavier McKinney and um, Evan Williams and Javon Bullard, but Jair Alexander you know, has been hurt over the last few seasons. Eric Stokes has barely played meaningful football in two full seasons. I don't know. Uh, I I think there's the, the cornerbacks are where I have a lot of questions because beyond that, and yeah, I think the third wide receiver option for for the Philadelphia Eagles is a pretty overrated Jahan Dotson uh, acquired via trade just a couple of weeks ago, but. Your other options are what, Keyshawn Nixon at nickel corner. He seems to have that job for now, I, I, at least hopefully until Javon Bullard eventually does later this season, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, but otherwise, you have Carrington Valentine, Corey Valentine. Serviceable, but I, I don't think super highly of them in, in terms of 
talent that's going to be able to help you win a Super Bowl. And then you get the over the middle problem. Is Kellen Moore going to fix that? Is Kellen Moore going to have this offense throw more over the middle when you have Dallas Goddard at tight end? And he could really be unlocked there. Now, I think the thing I have the most questions about is whether or not the Packers can stop uh, a quarterback who can run the ball a little bit, who can, who can scramble and get some yards because my goodness, <laughs> we have, we have not seen the green Bay Packers be able to stop a, a mobile mobile quarterback in a decade. If not longer, I, it, it, I mean, it basically goes back to the very first playoff loss at Lambeau field against Michael Vick. And I don't think the Packers ha have karmically ever recovered from that. When these two teams played two seasons ago, Jalen Hurts ran all over the Green Bay Packers. A lot of times on scrambled plays, wasn't necessarily designed runs, uh, but here he ran for 157 yards on 17 carries. You combine that now with a traditional run game with Saquon Barkley in the backfield, who I think his reputation is built up quite a bit on his draft pedigree, on his name still. I think he's made be a touch overrated, but he could certainly beat those allegations this season, given that he's going to be running behind the best offensive line he's had in his career. I have a lot of, of unanswered questions about this Packers defense. I think the play action game could be devastating to this Packers defense. Yeah, I, on the on the opposite side of the ball, <laughs> I think we're all really excited to see what Green Bay can do. Philadelphia has Vic Fangio coming in to run, you know, an offense that's similar or defense that is allegedly similar to what they had been running prior. But now you've got Vic Fangio doing it, and maybe Fangio can help cover up some of the warts where uh, Mina Kimes of ESPN pointed out the Eagles defense last year was 30 ranked to 32nd was the worst defense in the league by expected points added per play in throws zero to 10 yards down the field. The Packers generated the most expected points added per play on passes thrown zero to 10 yards down the field. So that, you know, short to intermediate stuff, particularly crossing routes. When I don't think Philly has a great linebacking core and they're going to be missing one of their linebackers for this game due to the injury. Packers, one of the best teams in the league last year and taking advantage of that. Eagles, one of the worst. See that making a big difference. It's ultimately, in my opinion, going to come down to which team is best prepared to make the adjustments that their coordinators are, are bringing in. And I think that's kind of a boring answer. Um, but I think it's the the intuitive one where where otherwise I think these two teams are pretty evenly matched. They are potent on both sides of the ball, but definitely have their flaws. And so I think whichever team comes in best prepared to execute its new scheme on whatever side of the ball uh, is going to come away with, with the victory in Sao Paulo uh, this evening. Let's, let's also break down quickly uh, before I catch this flight to uh, Westchester question mark. I don't know, somewhere in New York. Um, let's check in on the Wisconsin Badgers really quickly as well, because I jokingly said to Jake Meyer, who joined the podcast, um, last week, Jake Meyer, who helps us cover the Wisconsin Badgers, particularly football recruiting over at Athlon sports. I jokingly said to Jake. After he and I wrapped up recording our, our little recruiting, recruiting recap, ugh, recruiting recap pod. Whoo, that's tough. 
I jokingly said to him, look, I'm going to be in Cancun during this. I'm going to be in Mexico. If I'm watching this game against Western Michigan, it's probably not for good reasons. And if so, should I just not watch? I, I watched a lot. <laughs> um, between, you know, having listening to some radio call until eventually switching over and getting as much visual look as I could in the moment. And then after the fact, I was able to go live after the game because I just knew folks were going to be chomping at the bit to talk about it. And we fortunately had a lot of folks hop into our live uh, to be able to talk about the game. And we're going to try to keep doing that after these football games go live. Uh, about an hour after the game ends. Um, you know, give it a little bit of a cool off period to collect thoughts, jot notes, and hear back from some of the post game press stuff before we go live and then give our thoughts. Gonna keep trying to do that after these Badger football games, probably after some of these Packers games too. Um, but probably more so the Badger games because that's what you all like more in my in my audience that's what more of you watch so if you want more of the packer stuff you got to watch more of it um <laughs> but a couple of things that i want to go back to that i mentioned in there is one the longest play uh, of that game by the wisconsin offense being 17 yards If that's the case against South Dakota again this week, I think we got some big questions because I think Tui and Chez are ready to, I, I think they're just, you know, live to liable to rip off a big run in, in this upcoming game because they, they didn't break one against Western Michigan, which makes you think that either and or both of them are kind of due for it and i know that's a fallacy but just feels that way to me um but south dakota's defensive front is old it's experienced and south dakota overall is old on both sides of the ball uh they, they return 16 starters this season uh i believe one of their starting cornerbacks although he returns is still out uh, with a broken leg. That would be Shahid Barros, if I have that correctly. Um, but look, Wisconsin, I would love to see them generate some explosive plays here and challenge a good FCS caliber um, uh, secondary because although they, they certainly have some questions trying to cover up that hole at cornerback with Barros out, they have a transfer, I, I think, starting um, at one of the corners, cornerback spots in his stead. They also have a pretty solid uh, safety duo in Dennis Shorter and JoJo Ganus, Guanis, I don't know. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read the media guide this week to find the pronunciation. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm doing a bad job, <laughs> doing a bad job. Didn't, didn't get down to the name pronunciation section uh, on the media guide for South Dakota. Like I said, I I've been here for three days, three days and I'm leaving again. I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, and it's South Dakota. If it was three days and this was Alabama, you know, I would have sucked it up. I would, I would have, I would have done more reading on the plane, uh, back. But here, here we are. I would like to see Wisconsin challenge this South Dakota secondary. And I know Wisconsin had some communication issues between its receivers and Tyler Van Dyke at quarterback at times last week. You got, you got to get back in sync now. It, it, it's you you can't afford to lose a game like this. You 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 need a game like this to make sure that you are going to get to a bowl. <sighs> you, you lost 
a starting quarterback, cornerback as well. Not not just um, Barros. Your other starting corner, Miles Harden, is off in the league now. He's playing for the Cleveland Browns. So like, you have some opportunity there to pick at these starting corners. So the defensive line for the Badgers. I think the more I sat on it, actually, the the more worried I came away, e- even after the, the initial reaction. Because although Wisconsin did kind of shut down Western Michigan's general ability to run the ball in the second half, they didn't show any ability to generate a pass rush. A- at least not just through talent alone. And maybe they are saving some, some of these simulated pressures to whip them out against Alabama or against USC, which, by the way, I think I said in the preseason preview that Wisconsin was going to beat USC, and I think I'm already walking that. I think I'm already walking that back. I don't think they're getting that win. I That, that USC team is a lot better than I thought it was at least coming out of week one. That's that's what I uh, appear to see jumping off that television screen. And Wisconsin generated one tackle for loss the entire game against Western Michigan. That sack on, what, the last drive of the game by Elijah Hills? You'll have to clean pocket for the Western Michigan offense a lot more than I think is acceptable for the, what should be the, the talent disparity between those two programs. Now you have a big burly offensive line for South Dakota. All five starters are over 300 pounds. You got a pair of tackles at six foot seven and six foot eight to like power five size body size kind of offensive line. Now talent certainly have a disparity there, but this isn't like a normal FCS team where the body types are just different than what you should see at Wisconsin. I it's eh, it, it, that's, that's kind of moot. So if Wisconsin isn't going to be able to generate a pass rush, I am more worried about this team being able to stop the passing game of South Dakota than what my level of concern for stopping the pass game of Western Michigan would have been. Uh, And part of that's because of the wide receivers that, um, South Dakota boasts uh, one of the top receivers at the FCS level uh, had nearly 900 yards receiving last year. Carter Bell, 60 year senior. I wouldn't say he's the biggest guy, um, but for an experienced guy, an experienced roster that is used to winning, You have tight end J.J. Galbraith, who is on the Senior Bowl watch list, and that Senior Bowl scout team does a damn good job of identifying talent at every level, no matter where you go. He's also named to the East-West Shrine Bowl watch list. So maybe not just throwing deep, but also throwing over the middle. And I think those inside linebackers are maybe not quite as good as, as I kind of pegged them to be last last week. I'm not sure. I still think they're probably pretty good. But I'm willing to waver on it a little bit. I'm not predicting a loss for for Wisconsin here. I'm I'm really not. Um There, there should just be enough of a talent disparity for, for Wisconsin to take advantage. But we have not seen this team 
really push other teams around to a degree commensurate with what should be the established talent disparity between it and other programs. Wisconsin needed whoever it was, Davis Brin, to throw whatever it was, five five interceptions for Georgia Southern last last year to escape with that victory. Didn't need the luck against Western Michigan of a, of a punt that bounced off of an opponent and you'd recover to flip the field. Didn't need that. But it got pretty close to needing it. And speaking of special teams debacles, I also mentioned that that fake field goal and success on it by Western Michigan. Now, Hunter Wooler clearly got held on that play. So be it. But, and I'm going to link this uh, article in the show notes that uh, Dylan grafted for us over at uh, Athlon Sports. I guess Luke punts, Luke punts, a YouTuber looked back at all of Wisconsin's kick block formations for field goals on the hashes and found out that Wisconsin lined up the exact same way every single time. And Western Michigan exploited it. And so, and I said in the immediate instant repack, it was an instant reaction show um, last week that most of the time those fake field goal kicks are because they are looking at something schematically and find it. And I was maybe a little perplexed because it was just week one. I did not expect that this staff only has one field goal block. At all, one field goal block play in the whole playbook. Yeah, so yeah, there was something to exploit there because uh, Wisconsin's been running the same thing forever. Not a great look. Um, so I definitely have questions, but I think hopefully Wisconsin can get its passing game going a little bit. Peek its head above ground. Twee Walker, Ches Malusi. Can rip off a big chunk run or two. Should be enough to hold off an inferior opponent, but I don't know, like the the FCS caliber talent that uh, South Dakota has on its offensive line compared to the FCS caliber talent that Wisconsin has on its defensive line. Maybe that talent's better for South Dakota. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, we're going to be back. <laughs> Look, if, if I'm back doing a show Saturday night, it means that something has gone horribly wrong. Not, not only <laughs> for, for, for the Badgers, but also, uh, for what I'm going to. So look, if, ooh, if I'm, if I'm doing the show on Saturday night, um, I, I'm in big trouble, uh, for, for probably a couple of reasons. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe. We'll pop in here Saturday morning, talk about the Packers a little bit. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to do that. Not exactly sure. Um, but otherwise, we should be back Monday, Tuesday at the latest. Uh, talk about the upcoming week, week one of the NFL recap for the Packers, and then heading into game week against the Alabama Crimson Tide for the Wisconsin Badgers. Uh, but until we talk to you again, I'm your host, Kedrick Summers. I cover the Wisconsin Badgers for Athlon Sports. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scanny Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you are here listening on your podcast platform of choice, leave a kind review, five stars, nice comments. Really does help other people find the show. And like I've said in a few of these shows, we're really growing. We're really growing. It's going great. Um, really appreciate all of you. One of the ways that you're helping us grow is by watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scani six pack and subscribing there. Um, I think we're going to potentially run a little subscriber goal before the end of the year and maybe be able to give something away. So, uh, stay, stay tuned to the show to 
hopefully help us give give something a little bit away uh, for for the show here. And, and subscribe if you want to be part of that giveaway. Um, nothing confirmed yet, but you should subscribe anyway. Or wait, I guess. But no, you should do it now. Uh, either way, you will, you will be eligible. Um, but until we talk to you again, maybe tomorrow, probably Monday, on Wisconsin, and go Pack Go.